Boom! I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill. Today, I want to talk about a Pete 379 with a Mack half round in dump trailer. If you saw my video on mural trailers, this is sort of an extension of that video. In that video, I covered digital vehicle wraps for all kinds of vehicles, from partial wraps to complete wraps. But when I talked about tractor trailers, I did not have a back of the cab mural to show you. It is highly unlikely that the back of the tractor cab will have murals on them because of this backside cowlings that are seemingly so close to the trailers. It makes a mural quite pointless. However, I do have one back of the tractor cab mural truck in my collection. It is a custom show truck and that is where most of these murals would be. At truck shows, showing off the back of the cab is normal, so a mural would make it sense and make the truck really stand out. And here we go. This is a Peterbilt 379, a very custom owner operator 379, with a Mack Trailers half round in dump on a spread axle configuration. It is in a copper color with a chrome trailer. Isn't that beautiful? Now, as I said, this is a, the only truck I've got with a mural on the back of the cab. So I'm going to show that off after we talk about the trailer. This is the Maximizer half round trailer. It is an in dump. It's also a frameless in dump and it has the spread axle configuration. This is a really sharp custom owner operator job and you can see the mirror chrome finish on the sides of the trailer. There is the Mac trailers logo. It says Maximizer down here on the, the frame piece which this frame, all it is, is to help support it when it raises. There's no full frame on this. The rest of the trailer makes it up. They've got DOT striping all along there, and then they've got little clearance lights all along the side of the trailer. There's a ladder here so you can climb up, and then here is the crank that would unlock, pull around so they could roll up the tarp and then roll it back up and lock it in place. Now the crank doesn't move, it's just fixed and glued in place here, so don't really try and move it, it will break. They put show fenders over top of both axles, and then there's a little black mud flap on the front and back of the front one and on the front of this. In the back, there's a real mud flap hanging down. This one also has, right here, the stone guard to keep stones from flying up and tearing up the trailer. There's another marker light there right above the pivot point where this thing goes up and down. And the trailer comes with the standard screw down type landing gear. Pretty cool. Kingpin over here is set up for DCP and first gear, advantage die cast and even Neo scale models trucks. The frame and the carriage for the axles plus the ladder is body matched to the copper that's on the tractor so that's a really nice match set as i said it's an owner operator there's also some black detail along the frame underneath where the axles are and it has a working suspension air brake canisters and then the axle detail now the suspension is an air ride but it's not really well defined but it's there it's good enough you're probably not going to have it upside down anyway and then that is all just some plastic parts that hold the axles together there is soft rubber tires on each rim and then they have the 10 hole rims that they're mounted on really really sharp the back of this trailer flip that up a little bit there is the Mac trailer logo on both sides, and it says Maximizer right there. Really, really hard to see because the chrome just reflects black, but there, now you can see it, Maximizer. The little coal chute door, it does open. Carefully with the 
flipping the lever, it will slide right up. See? Right up. Also, the back door itself does flip open to dump out the load either way. And it is a mirror chrome finish on the inside, and I'll show that off when I roll the tarp open. There's your brake lights, DOT striping, and then big mud flaps for the axles. And then, very common on these types of trailers, is a big mud flap in between filling the gap. That way, stones and stuff don't get thrown out. The three required clearance lights are right there in red, and they're just little red dots that are tampoed on the frame. Over here on the passenger side, looks pretty much like the driver's side, only there is no ladder or crank. And then they added these pieces here, which are the locking places where you would roll up the tarp and lock it in place. Doesn't really work that well, but it's probably the best they can do based on the size of the trailer. On the front here, you can see a warnings, tampos, and decals all over it, the safety marks. There's two little clearance lights right there. And then there is the multi-stage piston that raises up. There's also a little um, flap right here so that you can keep, you know, the dirt and dust from getting into the piston. And the trailer does raise. You can see there is the multi-stage piston all up. Frame goes down and the trailer goes up. And it will dump. No problem. Anything you put in, it will actually dump it right out pretty easily. When you look to the top, here are the roof bows, which hold up the tarp. And then you can see that beautiful roundish bottom, and it is mirror-plated chrome. Really, really nice to have that chrome. And also, the round bottom is really great if you're hauling stuff that is um, really has a tendency to stick in the square ones this way it doesn't stick also if you'll notice the piston is not inside like on a typical in dump they put their piston on the outside with a flat wall in the front that way nothing gets stuck on each side coal dumps and square bottom dumps usually have it that way in traditional in dumps but these uh, half rounds have the piston on the outside so that it is a whole lot easier for the guy to dump his load. Now let's just set this trailer aside. It's a beautiful Peterbilt 379 with a 36 inch sleeper. It is in copper with silver stripes and then there's a little black pinstripe around the silver. Peterbilt logo there. Chrome cap on the breather so the whole breather is chrome and chrome bands. Chrome steps, chrome fuel tanks, chrome air tanks, and chrome straight stacks that are flat cut at the top. Chrome visor, chrome drop bumper, chrome air horns, and also chrome wheels. Not overboard on chrome, but I think it's a very tasteful amount of chrome on this truck. Round to the front, it has the chrome grill and headlights, and then the Peterbilt logo there. Headlights aren't even tampoed, but the Turn signals on the edge are tampoed in orange. Then it has the little hand grip right there. Inside it has a nice gray interior with two gray high back seats, gray dashboard, and a black steering wheel. There's also a black gear shift inside. 379 mirrors, and then that nice, nice drop visor right there. Passenger side, you can see it has the little door window so the driver can see down beside him really nice feature door handle door handle on the toolbox door and then a vent they tampoed the little vent silver also on both sides they put the fiberglass full round show fenders these really set the truck off however they don't exactly fit quite right over the wheels so that they have a tendency to grab and stick the wheels and hold them in place if they're not perfect because they're just too precision a fit up just a little and you can see it has the full frame cover now this one had a pogo stick with airlines but it covered up the mural so i took it off and then there is a copper colored body match colored 
fifth wheel on this truck. Underneath the whole underneath the whole drivetrain is painted copper, but the transmission is down here is painted gray and the engine is painted red. It has front spring suspension, positionable steering, not true steering, it's positionable, but that's okay. And on the rear, it has working suspension, air ride type, drive shafts, differentials, air brakes, and a really nice tread pattern, soft rubber tires. Under the hood, we have a detailed Cummins engine here. All the nice chrome piping for the turbo and the charge air system. And then it has the radiator and then a beautiful Cummins engine under the hood. Now, for what makes this truck really unique is this is the only one that I know of that DCP ever put a mural right here. And isn't that cool? A desert scene of, of with a wolf sitting up on top of a rock. Isn't that sharp? They even went so far as to make a piece to cover up the window so the mural would cover the whole thing. Because this sleeper tooling has a window here and sometimes it gets painted over but they got this nice piece to make this whole beautiful mural. Isn't that sharp? Do you guys have any trucks that DCP or anybody else has made that has had a mural painted on the back of the sleeper of, or the back of the cab? I believe this is the only one. It's the only one I've ever seen but there may be another one. And it's not a decal, it's not a print, it is a silk screen process is how they put this down for color and it makes a beautiful, beautiful print. And this is an old, old release from Diecast Promotions. It's a 164 scale Peterbilt 379 with Maximizer Mac half round trailer. It's from when they first came out with the Maximizer half round tooling for Mac trailers. It's way back, one of the very first runs of that trailer. It's in copper with silver stripes, chrome trailer, and it has that beautiful mural on the back of the sleeper. If you have not seen my video about car, truck, and trailer murals, click on the link below. I think you will find it interesting and colorful. In that video, I posed the question, is this truck art or Genius advertising. Either way, you think about it, the subject of the artwork is fantastic, so check it out. It takes quite a bit to keep this channel going, so please help me out by buying your next diecast replica from one of my websites and stores with the links down below. Sponsor me over on my Patreon page, also a link down below. Go on and smash that like button. Share this video with your followers and subscribe to my channel for more great diecast videos. Thanks for watching everyone. I really appreciate each and every one of you way, way more than I can ever express. This is Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, the founder of Advantage Diecast. And I'll be back soon with another episode of Toy Talk.